think smart manufacturing in various avatars has been there and when i'm talking about specifically in india right uh, now you know i think everybody would know what industry 4.0 is but i think india for uh, you know a long period of time was you know stuck in the industry 3.0 uh i think now at least especially all the large manufacturing companies have not only adopted but even accelerated their smart manufacturing journey but what we are seeing now is also some of the uh, small and medium enterprises small and medium manufacturers also now adopting which is actually a very good sign and i think there are many reasons for this see primarily uh, and again this is the same that applies to the world as well right so i think sensors Uh, IoT devices, uh, co- connectivity at the shop floor, etc., is becoming much easier, cheaper, etc. I think that is one uh, big reason. Uh, second is that you know when you look at some of the OEMs, right? People who manufacture these equipments for for the manufacturers, you know those are also now getting upgraded and getting uh, industry 4.0 ready, if I may say. uh and i think that makes it much easier for the the manufacturer to then connect that into their uh, you know their entire smart manufacturing ecosystem so that's the second reason i uh, the third is uh, i think it's much uh, it's it's more of a need right so it's very difficult to get good skills manufacturing skills now a lot of younger folks uh, you know they don't want to do uh, you know the, the the sweaty greasy uh, manufacturing jobs right so i think a lot of manufacturers are actually being forced into automating and you know adopting some of these industry 4.0 technologies so that's the third reason fourth i think what accelerated i think and that's one of the big reasons is the whole uh, covid right i mean so because of the lockdowns uh, you know a lot of these plant uh, managers plant personnel uh, you know needed to remotely monitor what was going on because some of them may not have been able to go to the plant uh you know where their personnel were working right so i think the whole need for monitoring things remotely you know you need to have your equipment connected right and that, that basically is the start of smart manufacturing so i think these are some of the reasons where uh, you know which are all coming together and uh, because of which smart manufacturing is going to grow rapidly in india uh, not only in large organizations but also in you know small and medium organizations as well so see i would i would say i partially agree with that so the, there is yes there is obviously much more data than we had few years back however and again i'm talking even broadly uh, not not godrej and boys specifically but broadly you know if you see manufacturers in india they are still using you know paper based log books where you know plant operators are you know writing things down now now that is a valuable uh, you know data but it's not really something that can be leveraged so i think there are a lot of companies which still need to digitize the the data which is basically at least having it on the systems and then basically leverage the digital transformation or industry 4.0 so i think that is one challenge which many manufacturers still are grappling with and they'll have to remove that uh, and i think it it might take a couple of years for them to do that but i think the sooner they do it the more data they then have, have available now the second problem which we are also facing is that you have a lot of data scattered around right the whole siloed solutions which i mentioned and especially when you multiply that by 14 businesses you know we have uh, you know many systems and that's where this whole platform approach uh, the smart manufacturing platform that we are building comes into play right because what we are saying is instead of each business you know going their own way uh, and building their own solutions which is good to have because i think they know their business the best what we are saying is we are giving you something a tool which you can just plug in your existing equipment your existing processes etc and then all of that data is going to be available for you now what that helps us with is that now we have data in one place of course then the next step would be how do you govern that data right because you know when you talk about a data cloud based platform you know we are talking about a data lake now if you don't monitor you know the the data that is coming in it can become a data swamp as it's called right and you don't want that to happen so you know we are we are putting in you know governance practices so from each business having the right kind of stakeholders who govern the data that is coming from their business into this platform 
and then basically ensuring that the data that we really need to generate insights, right? Whether it's for real time monitoring, whether it's for predictive, all of that is actually what we really want in the way we want it and in the frequency we want it, because otherwise it could be too much data that you're dealing with. So I think with the right kind of uh, you know data platform available, with the right kind of data governance available, and with the right kind of system integration that we've been able to do, uh, I think a lot of these problems could get mitigated. Again, the strategy would be different for different types of companies and depending on what uh, you know level of maturity they are at in terms of smart manufacturing. So for larger companies, for companies like Godrej and Boys, right? Uh, you know, again, I'm repeating it, but you know, going for a platform-based approach because that will give you you know the flexibility, the scalability, and plus you own the IP, right? For a large company like us. Uh, you know, with the manufacturing prowess that we bring on to the table over the last 125 years, we want to make sure that that IP, whatever we build, whether it's uh, the manufacturing processes or the advanced analytics, that IP remains with us. So I think larger companies and people, companies that are more mature, uh, you will see them adopting this platform-based approach. Uh, on the other hand, you know, this could be, this is an investment, right? and it takes time, it takes money, it takes effort, and it takes skills to do this. But if you look at for MSMEs or medium sized organizations or lower maturity organizations, I think what I have also seen is a, a great amount of startups um, who have actually brought on solutions, smart manufacturing solutions, and which are very focused to an industry. So you'll have startups, smart manufacturing uh, startups, which are focusing only on you know cement industry, some which are focusing only on pharma. You know, I think, and those are very plug and play, right? Because these companies know that pharma companies, for example, use X type of equipment. Now, how do you have a solution which quickly, you know, plugs and play with this equipment so that you can get started on your smart manufacturing journey in, you know, three months? So I, I think uh, I, I see that smaller companies are going to take that approach where they're going to take off the shelf solutions. Uh, even larger cloud providers like uh, AWS and Microsoft, uh, you know, they are also now partnering with these startups so that they can and, and doing a joint go to market with some of these MSM, right? Earlier, these were the ignored segment. But now they're also going towards these companies. Of course, they're still going to larger companies like us as well. We still leverage them. But I think that's where I think uh, we can see that, uh, you know, the acceleration of smart manufacturing adoption happening, um, you know, across across the, the country. Like I said, I mean, a lot of manufacturers, uh, you know, and Godridge included, I think everybody has equipment, you know, some of them which are probably 15 years old. Uh, you know, so that, so the, there are two problems with that, right? Number one, because it's older equipment, uh, hence uh, outdated, hence, uh, you know, it could, you know, the chances of failure uh, or mean time between failure, as you would call it, is much lower compared to a newer equipment. Uh, so I think that is a challenge that one will have to grapple with. And second is even for newer equipment, right, which are more recent, last few years, et cetera. Now, I think how you tackle it for those two types of equipments is very different. When you talk about these older equipment, uh, you know, what we have also done, right, even uh, at GNB, we also have many of these older equipment. Uh, what we do is we basically, uh, you know, retrofit sensors, uh, you know, so you retrofit, you know, either visual sensors, vibration sensors, noise, sound sensors, etc., light sensors, all of these kind of sensors, uh, which were not possible or which are not supported by the OEM, but we basically retrofit them. So we start getting data about that equipment. Uh, so that is the older equipment. For newer equipment, uh, whenever we buy this newer equipment, we ensure that with the OEM, uh, you know, that they are UPC, uh, OPC UA compliant, right? So basically when we plug in that equipment, it easily starts putting in data into our platform. Now in both these cases, what happens is what we do something called as condition-based monitoring. 
So either in the retrofitted case for older equipment or newer equipment where by default the machine is throwing out data, we start collecting all that data, right? And then our maintenance teams, and we have plant maintenance teams as well who are con continuously monitoring that system and looking for anomalies, right? That was until some, uh, I would say about a year back that they were manually doing the anomaly uh, determination. However, then you start adding your machine learning and AI, right? So now because of past failures and what were the conditions or what were the parameters at that time, you can then slowly start determining what is causing failure or if it is nearing failure, right? So in now, now what is happening is that our plant maintenance teams are alerted saying that, hey, you know, there is, you know, this particular compressor or this particular equipment, uh, you know, there's a high vibration happening, etc. Oil level is also low. Maybe you need to do some kind of predictive maintenance on this, right? So, so I think the first step for any company is for first basically ensuring that the equipment data is basically being leveraged. Second, you're doing condition-based monitoring. And third, with the data that you have over the last six months, one year, et cetera, how do you actually leverage advanced analytics like AI and ML to do predictive maintenance? Um, and I think after that, the next step will be the prescriptive. So then you know, the, your model will say that, hey, Mr. Plant Maintenance Guy, you need to go and fix this particular compressor and you need to, you know, put oil and you need to tighten this bolt because of vibrations, right? So I think that's that's the journey one will have to take. Uh, it's not, it's easier said than done. I think uh, many of the other organizations out there will take much longer on that journey, but I would recommend that you, you start getting and acquiring that data. Uh, immediately from the equipment. And I think that's where it will help prevent this downtime. Because, uh, you know, downtime in any industry, any equipment that goes down, right, I think it has serious ramifications for the business, right? Uh, you know, the entire supply chain, inventory, customer experience, all of that gets impacted. So I think, so it's a good question. I think, uh, you know, lots more has to be done in this area uh, in terms of equipment uptime, uh, productivity improvements uh, to ensure that ultimately the customer doesn't suffer. I, I think manufacturing industry, uh, you know, uh, if you look at it a few years back, it was probably a laggard in terms of technology adoption, especially when you call digital technologies. But I think, uh, you know, over the last few years, manufacturing has become one of the largest investors in terms of uh, new age technologies, right? IoT, AI, ML, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, all of that. So I see that in India, uh, uh, too, it's going to basically accelerate at a rapid pace. Uh, so it's not only IoT, right? When people we talk about smart manufacturing, uh, you know, everybody thinks IoT. IoT is just the means to get the data and then to generate insights. I think the biggest differentiator for any manufacturer or any company is going to be how they are, uh, you know, how they're creating these artificial intelligence based models and how are they leveraging it to improve their business, right? Or, or basically improve their customer experience. Um, so that is, I think, going to be very important. It's also going to be, I see a lot of AR, VR, right? Immersive technologies coming in, whether it's remotely assisting people, uh, you know, your technicians on the field uh, or, or your operators, uh, you know, you know, using augmented reality. Uh, I can actually see, uh, you know, a lot of our plants at some point in time also wearing, you know, those headsets where you can actually, uh, you know, get information and uh, guided instructions on, you know, how to assemble parts or how to assemble equipments. So I think uh, there is a lot of scope uh, for in for India, I, I think we are still at a preliminary stage, but I see that over the next few years, a lot of these newer technologies are going to come into play, and and I think that's going to accelerate the entire industry 5.0 uh, as we call it now uh, across the country. <laughs>